What's going on? And thank you for joining us. I'm Brian and welcome to Simple Man's Comics. And we are excited to present a fresh new show discussing the September 2nd final order cutoff for new comic books. With me as always is my co-host Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo. So sit down, grab yourself a drink because it is last call. What's going on, Jack? I'm excited to be here, Brian, and I'm excited for this new show because we're going to be talking pre-FOC speculation. FOC is, of course, final order cutoff, and final order cutoff for the books that we're going to be discussing tonight is this Monday. So we are going to be giving everybody out there in the Simpleman's Comics YouTube family one last chance to get those orders in with your local LCS, with your online dealer, and make sure you are locked in and guaranteed those copies come release day on 925. Right. And when he's talking about those online dealers, we also like to recommend slabheroes.com and frankiescomics.com, two great sponsors of Simple Man's Comics. But some people might also be asking, hey, what's this final order cutoff show? what happened to the hot 10 comics that was normally in this spot where we have this show airing for you guys. We always say we're transparent, community and integrity lead this channel. So the content still exists, but the content is no longer on Simple Man's Comics. You can find the actual written list at comicbookinvest.com where it's always been, but we are also happy to pass that baton for that video content. And that is the CBSI Presents Tales from the Flipside podcast. You might be asking yourself, why are we doing this? Because Tales from the Flipside podcast has the actual list creator. So it was only natural for him to be able to present the video content with that gang over there at Tales from the Flipside. We also want to control the content that we create. So this just makes it more easier for us. We can make this list ourselves. We can put the books out there that we like. And we wanted it to be proactive instead of reactive. This is books before they even come out. Hot 10 is great. It shows you what has risen on the secondary market. We're putting out those books now that you can pre-order, get them in your hand on release day, and then see that natural growth as they possibly rise and end up on the Hot 10 list themselves. Isn't that right, Jack? Absolutely. This is the show that hardcore speculators don't want you to see. They don't want you to know this information. And we are here to share our knowledge and experience, and what we're looking at from these FOC lists with you, the Simpleman's Comics family. So this is the first show, and I'm sure there's going to be some changes as we grow into this, but for the basic format, we are going to pick 10 of our favorite comics for FOC for the purpose of this video. We're going to discuss them. This video is not going to be super long. We promise you we aim to keep this at 30 to 35 minutes, so it's sweet and to the point, but if you want to see the full FOC list, it will be available on simplemanscomics.com. So make sure you check that out. And without further ado, we're going to get into the last call. And that is the comic books that we like for FOC for September 2nd, 2019. All right, guys. So the first book we're going to discuss during this FOC period is Amazing Spider-Man number 30. This is going to have three different covers for it. There's a regular cover. There's a regular Price of Mortal wraparound variant, as well as a 1 in 25 Codex variant. Now, we don't have the art right now for anything but the regular cover, but this is something to take note of, isn't it, Jack? It is, Brian. And I tell you, this is a series that you and I have not been very high on, really, at all. Um, you're talking about written by Nick Spencer, art by Ryan Otley. Um, both you and I have kind of talked about how some of the other Spider-Man series is, have kind of resonated with us more. But the reason why we're talking about this one right off the bat on the very first Last Call episode is because this is an absolute carnage tie-in. Uh, Spider-Man has been at the center of the absolute carnage story. And here, Carnage is coming into the Spider-Man title. And you know what the biggest thing about this book is for me, Brian? They mentioned in the solicit that this story involves Dylan Brock. And I think this is going to come out right when Dylan Brock's speculation is at his peak. Exactly. So it makes you also speculate about what that Immortal Wraparound cover could be. We have the cover for number 29. Why don't we have it for number 30? Right, and 29 we know is another immortal wraparound variant and that it's Spider-Man featured. Could this be Carnage? Could this be Dylan Brock? Is there some reason why Marvel hasn't released this cover art yet? We don't know. That's the speculation part of this. And that's why it's great to be talking about this pre-FOC. Right, and the good thing about FOC is, yeah, the regular cover might be easy to find, but if you want that wraparound, especially that 1 in 25 incentive, that's what you need to take note of and that's what you need to get the order in for. Absolutely. So speaking of absolutely, there's also some other absolute carnage tie-ins that come out that same week, isn't there, Jack? 
Right, there's two more. You're looking at Absolute Carnage, Miles Morales, number two, as well as Absolute Carnage, Avengers, number one. So just remember, Absolute Carnage right now has the attention of a lot of comic book speculators, so make sure you take note of those titles that Jack just mentioned as well. And the next book that we're going to talk about comes right from Boom Studios, and it ties directly into a brand new show that hit Netflix today. And we're talking about Jim Henson's Dark Crystal Age of Resistance number one. This has three different covers for it. There's a regular cover. There's a regular price B cover, but they just added a final order cutoff variant from Christian Ward as well. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this show, Brian. Talking pre-FOC spec right here on the last call show on the Simplemans Comics YouTube channel gives us the opportunity to highlight a book like this Christian Ward variant. Now, we've talked about Dark Crystal speculation before on the Hot and Cold show, and we've talked about the fact that some of the previous Dark Crystal series hadn't really popped off in the secondary market in anticipation of this Netflix show. But this series is directly tying in to the series that debuts today, and the beauty of talking about these books right before FOC is we're able to talk about a book like this Christian Ward variant, which only got announced a couple days ago. So there's a short window to be able to order this book. And that's why we're talking about it right here and giving you the opportunity to get those orders in. Right. It is important to know it's a 12 issue miniseries and it's a prequel that takes place right before the first film. If you're like me and grew up in the eighties, huge fan of dark crystal. So I can't wait to get my hands on this book. I'm definitely going to bring you, pre-ordering that Christian Ward variant. And for the next book, we're going to go back over to Marvel and we're going to talk about Runaways number 25. Had the hit show on Hulu, but I haven't really been following this comic that much. So what's the deal on this one, Jack? Well, you know, the truth is, Brian, really neither have I, but Marvel put a lot of advertising out, advertising this new Doc Justice and the J team that we know is going to be appearing in the comics at some point. They compared them to the Avengers and the Defenders, and that is a lofty comparison. And with issue number 24, there was the surprise reveal that some character that we don't know who it is, but we presume is Doc Justice, made the offer to the Runaways to form the J-Team, uh, a new super team that is tasked with protecting Los Angeles. Issue 25 is going to possibly reveal even more information about this team. This could be a first full appearance. We could be the first appearance of, who, of Doc Justice or reveal of who Doc Justice is. And this is what's great about this show, The Last Call Show on Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, is we are able to talk about books like this that are really flying under people's radar. Runaways is not hugely printed. It's being basically ignored by speculators. And even you and I admit it's not really series that we pay attention to. So this is exciting to be able to talk about a book like this and try to turn people's attention to a book that they may be overlooking because this could be the type of back issue that explodes later on. So we have a new Dr. J in the house. Shoot the J. Shoot it. And one thing to note, at least at FOC, we only have one cover, and that is something Marvel hardly ever does, right? Right, and tends to be the recipe for success when we're talking first appearances. And keeping with Marvel, and especially team books, we're going to head over to Marvel Strike Force number one. There's going to be a book with kind of a weird team of members, and it's going to have a bunch of different covers as well. We have the regular cover. There's a Mike Diodata Jr. variant. There's an Immortal Wraparound variant. There's also a 1 in 25 variant, a Greg Horn variant, a 1 in 50 variant, and a 1 in 100 Hidden Gem variant. Yeah, Brian, and the, and the solicitation talks about a new threat coming to the Marvel Universe, one that Blade has seen before, but he cannot bring the Avengers in on. So he has to form his own team. And this team features Blade, Angela, Spider-Woman, Wiccan, Damian Hellstorm, Winter Soldier, and Monica Rambeau. Talk about a crazy team. <laughs> right, right. But you know what? A lot of names there that we're talking about with MCU spec. If you really think about it, you've got Winter Soldier, you've got Damian Hellstorm, you've got Monica Rambeau, and you've got, of course, Blade, who we're talking about so much in the speculation community with these MCU uh, TV shows and movies. Right, and it's nice and it's refreshing to see a team full of members that you're not used to seeing. I'm definitely on this book. The only decision that makes it hard is which cover to get. Right. Like most Marvel number ones, Brian, the danger with this book is will it be overprinted? Will LCSs chase these high ratio variants? And it's, it's too tough to tell when we're talking pre-FOC. But I think this is a story to pay attention to because like we always say on this channel, horror is hot. Exactly. 
And staying with team books yet again, we're going to go with Transformers Galaxies number one. This comes from IDW. It's going to have a bunch of different covers. We're going to have the regular cover. We're going to have a cover B Roche variant. We're going to have a 1 in 10 incentive variant. And we're also going to have a 1 in 25 incentive. And this series is going to be a spotlight on the Constructicons. The Constructicons are a series of construction vehicles who come together to form their ultimate form, the Devastator. So we're going to be talking Decepticons in this series, Brian. And the thing is, IDW is putting a lot of marketing effort into this series. Right, because we mentioned on this channel before, especially in the Bolo Show, when IDW normally has their 1 in 10 incentives, but whenever they add a 1 in 15 or a 1 in 25 like this title does, that's usually one thing we take note of. So we definitely have that in this FOC video. Yeah, and history has proven that Transformers 1 and 25s tend to do very well in the secondary market. And sticking with IDW, the next book we're going to talk about is Pandemica number one. This is going to have the regular cover as well as a 1 in 10 incentive variant for this. Yeah, Brian, and this is one I got to be honest with you, I'm excited for. The solicitation in and of itself reads like a movie with war brewing in America and a shadow government preparing to launch purity bombs for ethnic cleansing. A small group of scientists and former special ops shooters stand in their way. I mean, that right there sounds like a Netflix TV show. And to even get you more excited and to make that parallel, this is written by Jonathan Mabry, the writer of V-Wars, which will be debuting on Netflix soon. He also wrote the popular Rot and Ruin series for IDW. So there is a lot of reason to be excited about this series. Right, I'm definitely excited. And the one thing is the 1 in 10 looks very similar to the regular cover. But either way, that 1 in 10 will still be sought after. And here's your chance to try to get that order in for it before FOC. Yes, before it heats up and everyone's paying attention to it. And the next book we're going to talk about, although obvious, it is still important. And we're talking about Powers of X number five. This is going to have eight different covers for it. There's the regular cover. There's a character decades variant. There's a Scotty Young baby variant. There's a John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. There's a Dustin Weaver new character variant. There's also a David Nakayama connecting variant. There's a 1 in 10 Mike Huddleston variant and a 1 in 100 RB Silva virgin variant. Right. And like you said, this isn't a book we have to sell you on. Every one of these books has hit $10, $15 on the secondary market for cover A. Uh, I can't guarantee that that's going to happen here. But my expectation is, is that this book is going to be hot, just like the rest. I would pay special attention to those connecting covers as they seem to be doing extremely well on the secondary market. And David Nakayama is an amazing artist, uh, as well as pay attention to that one in 10 incentive, which those have also made solid returns. So moving back over to Indy, we're going to talk about Vault Comics, and they have the plot number one coming out. See, Brian, this solicitation is one that gets me excited because when our main character's estranged brother and sister-in-law are murdered, he becomes the guardian of his niece and nephew, who he hardly knows. Seeking stability for the children, he moves them to the newly formed ancestral home of Cape Augusta, which overlooks a deep black bogland teeming with family secrets. Now, we've talked about on this channel that horror is hot, and you and I both got excited about that vault vintage variant, didn't we, Brian? You sat there and talked about just in the solicit how it's full of secrets, and then you have the vintage homage for it, which is House of Secrets. What a great cover. Definitely looking forward to picking up that cover B. Nathan Gooden, Tim Daniel, always crushing it with his vault vintage covers. Right, so that's the first appearance of Swamp Thing, and that's what this story evokes to me when I, I read this solicit. And... Another thing is there will be another Vault Vintage variant released this week with Relics of Our Youth, number one, and that Deadly Class variant. So be on the lookout for these Vault Vintage variants because they tend to get the attention of speculators. And if you have one of those LCSs that don't order a lot of independent books, that's why we have this FOC show for you. And that's how you can let them know, hey, I want this book. Order it for me right now. Just make sure you get it in Monday before 10 p.m. And next on our list, a title that no person is unfamiliar with these days, and we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 98. This is going to have three different covers for it. We have the A cover. We have the B cover, Kevin Eastman. We also have the one in 10 incentive. But we want to add our sponsor, Frankie's Comics. They have a gorgeous Gabrielle Del Otto variant for this. They have the trade dress and the virgin variant available on their site right now, frankiescomics.com. The link will be in the description of this video. But 
Why is this book important to us, Jack? Well, Brian, this is part of the City of War story. This is part six, which is leading into that epic issue number 100. And we just talked about issue number 97 that saw Jenica don the yellow mask and join the Ninja Turtles. In this issue, we're seeing some friction in the Turtles. Cover B, that Eastman cover you mentioned, shows Raphael and Leonardo kind of at blows with each other with Donatello trying to separate the two of them. We see Jenica in the background as well. And cover A, that tells us a lot about what's going on in this story as we see a cover of the Mutanimals with Raphael standing side by side with them. The solicit even mentions that there's gonna be an event in this book that is gonna change Turtles history. We also know that Baxter Stockman is up for election of mayor of New York. So there is a whole lot going on in this issue and I have a feeling that this is gonna be a key. Definitely. So as we mentioned, Frankie's Comics has that Gabrielle Daughter variant. But if you're also looking for these regular issues, especially in 9 8s, make sure you're checking out NakedSlabbedHeroes.com, our other channel sponsor, because he has those listed up there as well. Yes, he's all over this turtle story, and he is always grabbing these issues as well as those exclusive variants. And the next book that we want to talk about for FOC for September 2nd, 2019 is Action Comics number 1015. We've talked about this book on Bolo Show. We've talked about this book on other videos, but we feel this book is important. And why is that, Jack? Well, this book is all about Naomi and her place in the DC universe. In this issue, the solicit tells us right what to expect from the get-go. They're letting us know that Naomi is looking to Superman to help her navigate her role as a hero in the universe. And in this issue, not only are we hoping to answer some questions about her origin and lineage, but we know that she is not only going to encounter Superman, but also the Dark Knight himself. And the funny thing about this is we had the regular cover by David Marquez, and then leading up to it, there's always a solicit for a Gabriel Del Otto variant. But another good reason why we have this FOC video, that just changed, didn't it, Jack? It did. And I tell you what, this is why speculators don't want us doing this show. They don't want us telling you this information. This Gabriel Delato cover B cardstock variant was looked at by a lot of people as not necessarily his best work. And I, we even told you on other shows on the channel that it was that cover A to pay attention to. But now we have a cover B by Lucio Perillo that is absolutely stunning, featuring both Superman and Naomi herself, putting Naomi on the cover of both cover A and cover B. And it just came out today on the 29th. And it's weird about that cover because I'm like 50-50 on it. I don't really like the Superman part of it, but I love the depiction of Naomi on that cover. Yes, me too. I can definitely agree with that. And I, now I'm kind of split. Will it be cover A or cover B that is the cover to get? And I have a feeling that that small window to order cover B will make cover B the one to get. But either way, I think, like we've talked about before, sets A and B may be the way to go. So that's the main overall list we have for you. But in addition, this FOC is also going to have some major additional printings for titles that have already come out. Right, Jack? Absolutely. This is the last call show, but we know there are some of you stragglers who are the last ones to make it out of the bar. Maybe you're a little behind, maybe you're a little late, and maybe you just want just one more printing. So for you guys, we have some late printings to talk about. Image Comics is releasing Pretty Violent, number one, a second printing, as well as White Trees, number one, a second printing. Marvel's releasing a bunch of late printings. We've got Absolute Carnage, number one, the fourth printing, which boasts some new cover art. Absolute Carnage, number two, second print. Captain Marvel, number eight, a third printing. And of course, that's the first appearance of Star. We've got Absolute Carnage versus Deadpool, number one, a second printing. We've got House of X, number three, second printing. We've also got Marvel Comics Presents, number eight, second printing. Miles Morales, Spider-Man, number nine, second printing. Powers of X, number two, third print. And a Symbiote Spider-Man, number five, second printing. Also, Scout Comics is releasing Gut Ghost, Till We Meet Again, second print. 
So we gave you our picks for FOC, and then Jack also mentioned those additional printings. But if you want to see the full FOC list, it's over on SimplemansComics.com. So that's going to do it for the premiere episode of The Last Call Show here on the Simplemans Comics YouTube channel. And of course, as we always say, we listen to our viewers, our Simplemans Comics family members. We take that term very seriously. And you all let us know that you wanted pre-FOC spec. And that's what we are here to do. We are here to listen to you and give you the content that you want. So again, if you're looking for the CBSI Hot 10 Comics, it is no longer on Simple Man's Comics, but it will be over at CBSI Presents Tales from the Flipside YouTube channel every Friday night. Also check them out Mondays at 9.30 for their podcast. I will also want to take this time to thank Simple Man's Comics family Patreon members. Really appreciate your support, as well as to thank the channel sponsors, Slabbed Heroes and Frankie's Comics. And with that being said, I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. So make sure you contact your comic book stores or put that order in online because it is last call. <laughs>